Hi, I'm Matt Patterson with the Oklahoman. We're back with another edition of Zoo Tales. I'm joined by Katie Hawk from the Oklahoma Nature Conservancy. Correct. And Dr. Rebecca Snyder from the Oklahoma City Zoo. Thanks for coming in today. Thank you. Uh, we're talking monarchs today. And I know this month, this time of year, is the time that monarchs come through Oklahoma. And just kind of kind of summarize that. Talk about what ha what's going to happen. And either one of you can take it. But what's going to happen in the next couple months? Okay, so the monarchs are due to cross the border from Texas into Oklahoma possibly today, so that's exciting. So they will slowly make their way up through the state on their journey north. And these are going to be the monarchs that spent the winter in Mexico, so they um, have made this incredible journey. And now they are starting to lay their eggs on their way to continue the next generations that then will be the summer population, and then they're going to move their four generations from now they're going to move back through in the fall and then over winter in Mexico again. It's an amazing, amazing journey. And it's what, thousands, that's thousands of miles obviously. Yes, about 3,000 miles total if they come all the way from like Canada. Yeah. yeah. And Katie, you guys, can you talk a little bit about Okies for Monarchs and, and what that's all about? Sure. So Okies for Monarchs is a public campaign to get Oklahomans involved in helping save the monarchs. And it is a derivative of the Oklahoma Monarch and Pollinator Collaborative, which is a uh, collaborative um, initiative of 40-plus uh, organizations statewide, including the Oklahoma City Zoo and the Nature Conservancy, plus 40 other organizations. And uh, we all came together to develop what's called an, uh, a statewide monarch action plan. And this is part of that. So this is our outreach strategy from that plan to get everyone involved, because every Oki can help. No matter who you are or what you do, whether it's a business or a corporation or a farmer or teachers, students, residents, there's something for everyone um, in regards to helping save the monarchs. And, and why is it important to have multiple organizations involved? Talk about that. Sure. So there's, well, like I said, there's something for everyone. Uh, and when with Oklahoma, we have a lot of private, uh, most of the land in Oklahoma is privately owned. And so we want to be able to reach those landowners. It's not, in, in other states, they may have more public land um, owned by the government, um, and whereas in Oklahoma, majority is privately owned. And so it's very important to incorporate all the different audiences that are involved in regards to land ownership. And that also includes corporations, utility companies, um, the, a, a numerous entities um, who are involved in land ownership in Oklahoma. And those vast land um, landscapes are where we really can make a big difference. But again, there's something everyone can do because it's so important to have nectar and host plants for the monarchs. And what are some things people can do to, to help them along in their journey? So, um, you know, being from the zoo, I talk about endangered species all the time, and we have conservation projects all over the world, and habitat loss is a huge problem for almost every species out there. And it's very hard for somebody in Oklahoma to create habitat for elephant in their backyard, right? But the great thing about right. monarchs is you can actually do that. So one of the most important things that people can do is just plant for them. So we're asking people to plant milkweeds because that's what the butterflies lay their eggs on and that's the only food the caterpillars will eat. And then also flowering plants that produce nectar for the adult butterflies to feed on. And um, you can do that just in a small patch, like 100 square feet in your backyard is enough. Even patio pots can be a little pit stop for monarchs. And if you don't have room at your house, you know, you can do it at your no local park, you can do it at your kid's school. Um, so there really is opportunity for everybody to help out. Like we were talking about, a lot of the stuff that they like is really super low maintenance stuff. You know, it's yes, not, yes. So you don't have to have a green thumb. Really no, to... no, these are some hardy plants. So we really encourage people to plant native plants whenever possible and perennial and once those get started, they need very little water. They don't, you don't have to mow them. You just kind of let them go and they do their thing. And um, they are ideal for the monarchs, but then also for our other native pollinators who are declining. What do we have here in this, in this jar? Is that, do you want to talk about that? Sure, so that is a pollinator seed mix from Johnston Seed Company. They donated to us. We've been giving these out at our monarch meetups. And uh, this is a real easy seed um, mix to, to um, to plant at home, um, but it has a little bit of everything in it. It's got four different types of milkweed, common milkweed, butterfly milkweed, showy milkweed, and swamp milkweed, and then a variety of nectar plants uh, that are native to Oklahoma, such as Indian blanket, cone flowers, Maximilian sunflowers, um, black-eyed Susans, those types of things. And one of the reasons why they don't require so much water or maintenance is because these are native plants. 
Yeah. So they're, they're drought tolerant. They're used to being here, mm -hmm. yeah. obviously. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and you guys have a butterfly garden, right? Talk about that, Talk about that, Rebecca, and what, what people mm -hmm. get out of that experience. Yeah, so the zoo has a monarch way station. So those are, it's basically uh, some criteria that f you fulfill that Monarch Watch, which is a big um, research project run out of the University of Kansas. And we have one of the biggest ones at the zoo. So that's an important hub at the zoo for teaching people about pollinator gardens. That's also where we do our festival on the fall. And that's where we do tagging of monarchs for the Monarch Watch Citizen Science Project. One of the cool things about monarchs is there's a lot of really great, fun citizen science projects that people can participate in as well. And the one that's coming up this spring is Journey North. So all you do is go to the Journey North website and record the first monarch that you see this spring, which is a lot of fun for everyone. And you will see them. I mean, they do. I mean, mm -hmm. it's kind of, they're just kind of a peer, you know, like you were saying, they have a period where they come through the state and then they're gone. So, um, and they're, like we were talking about, they're pollinators. Why is it important to have things that pollinate? I mean, I think people, I think people somehow magically think their food just arrives at the grocery <laughs> store in a lot of cases. But what, talk about pollinization and why that's important. Either one of you who would ahead, like to take yeah. it. <laughs> sure. So uh, obviously, uh, pollinators, uh, we need them to pollinate our food. Um, um, so crops uh, that, that, that farmers um, are growing, um, we need pollinators to pollinate the food in order for them to grow. And so what's gr happening with the pollinators, uh, the decline of the populations, farmers are actually trucking in. They're paying companies to truck in bees and other pollinators to actually pollinate their crops. So it is very important that we um, help assist, obviously, the crop generation um, which we have much of here in Oklahoma, um, and then also uh, being, being able to support the pollinators uh, natively, the native pollinators here in our state, and that helps the, the farmers and the food that reaches our table eventually. And monarchs kind of fall victim to the same thing bees do, right? Absolutely. It's pesticides. Yeah, exactly. So sometimes people call them the, the, um, the canary in the cornfield <laughs> because <laughs> Um, they are susceptible to those pesticides. It's not just habitat loss, but all of the things that kind of disrupt the balance ecologically affect the insects first. And because they're such an important part of the food chain, um, it's concerning to our to human health and the environmental health when those insect populations are in as much trouble as they are currently. Right. I was going to add that the monarch population decreased another. Uh, about 15 percent. Yeah, 15 percent this wow. year. And if you go online to look at the populations, you'll just see how it, it, it is continuing to go down. And so we're really hoping that this all hands on deck collaborative approach in our state can help inspire and empower others to, to, to do something, whether it's something small or something large. And it doesn't, if, if let's pretend you're an artist and, and you have a turf backyard and gardening just isn't your thing, but you're an artist. Um, you might partner with entities such as the zoo or your neighborhood association to do an, a, an art installation to raise awareness about monarchs. So there's something that everyone can do. And I know Hideaway, uh, they they got yeah. involved too. They're one of the, Heck one yeah. of the Oklahoma <laughs> Even companies pizza companies that, can get involved. <laughs> that, uh, and people who like to eat pizza yeah. exactly. can get involved. And what is this called? What is this pizza? This is the pollinator. <laughs> and it tells, what is it in, what, what are the ingredients in a pollinator? Well, I'm not mic'd, so I don't know if anyone yeah. can hear me. You want to talk about that? I think we've got, do you know, Katie? There are three types of, of meats, um, pepperoni, yeah, salami, and one other meat, and then banana peppers and honey. Honey is the magical ingredient on this pizza. And at first, at first looks, it's, it just kind of looks like a normal basic pizza, right? Yeah. But then once you indulge in this, it is amazing. I'm holding it over your it'll face. It'll change your <laughs> definition of pizza. Yeah, it looks interesting. I mean, it, it, I think everybody likes honey. So it's, it, it, yeah. pizza is not something you would think about, but yeah. it, it seems, I, I know it works. I've heard you talk about how good it is. Yeah, so. and that with the, the banana peppers <laughs> and the, the honey together really give it a tangy and a sweet. Um, combination of flavors. It's pretty That's appetizing. That, pretty creative from, from the folks at Hideaway. Yeah. Um, events. Talk about, there's monarch meetups. Talk about those. What, if people want to come out or get involved in any way, how can they do it? Sure. And real quick, before we leave the Hideaway topic, just want to add, they're donating 10% of their proceeds to the Okies for Monarchs um, initiative. So from the sales of the pollinator pizza now through uh, May 14th. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And so in, in combination with that, we're hosting monarch meetups at their locations statewide. And uh, we've got a number of events coming up. Uh, we have Bartlesville, Yukon, Edmond, and um, 
Owasso. We're also planning one for Tulsa and Oklahoma City, and we should have those dates um, this week firmed up for the Tulsa and Oklahoma City, but the other ones we have the dates set for. Yeah. And, um, In the city area, we've got Yukon on April 10th from 5 to 7, mm -hmm. and April 24th at, in Edmond from 5 to 7. Yes. At their location. Yes, that is correct. And do you want to kind of talk about what goes on at the yeah. meetups? Yeah, so I did the first one in Norman, which was fantastic. We had about 40 people come, which was great turnout. And so I was there representing the Oklahoma Monarch and Pollinator Collaborative, but um, Katie also invited experts from the Norman area to be there. So we had Bill Ferris, who's the um, owner of Prairie Wind Nurseries, which is a great place to buy plants, and some experts from University of Oklahoma there and it's a chance just to talk with like we just chat with people if they have questions about their gardens or what to plan or they just want to share with other people who are excited about pollinator gardens and pollinators it's very informal we talk about you know gardening and what you can do for monarchs and how people can get involved and we really encourage people to go to the on Okies for Monarchs website and register their gardens so that people can see okay this is the habitat that we have in the state and we want to see that grow as more and more people get involved in the movement so take pictures eat pizza and learn learn a little bit about yeah. monarchs. Yeah. And they'll even get free samples yes. of the pollinator yeah. pizza while they're there and free samples of the pollinator seed mix too. Pretty good deal. Yeah, it's the total yeah. pollinator yeah. party. <laughs> <laughs> well, very good. Katie and Rebecca, thanks for coming in and, and uh, good luck with the, with the project coming up in the next month or so. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you.